Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about the African diaspora in Jamaica. Freedom. Jamaica's ethnic diversity is reflected in the national motto, out of many, one people. That said, Jamaicans of African descent make up over 90% of the country's population. The black population in Jamaica largely descends from the enslaved Africans that were brought to Jamaica by the British during the transatlantic slave trade. Jamaicans speak a mixture of standard English, Jamaican English and Patois, which is a language unto itself. Patois is a Creole language which combines words from English, French, Spanish and German with words of African origin derived from the many languages spoken by their forebearers. The earliest inhabitants of Jamaica were the indigenous Redware people, followed by the Tainos and the Arawaks. Enslaved Africans were first brought to Jamaica by the Spanish, who colonised the island in 1494 and named it Santiago, wiping out the indigenous population. When the British colonised Jamaica in 1665, the enslaved Africans they trafficked to the island were mostly from the Akan people of modern-day Ghana, as well as Igbo, Yoruba and Congo people, among others. They were imported to work on the numerous sugar plantations, which quickly became a booming and lucrative industry for the British Empire. By 1800, there were 21,000 English inhabitants on the island, and over 300,000 enslaved Africans. A trade route emerged called the Triangular Trade, whereby enslaved Africans were trafficked from Africa to the Caribbean. They in turn produced sugar, molasses and rum, which were exported to England for sale, and the money made financed the return to Africa to trade more slaves. Jamaica was at one time considered the crown jewel of the British Empire and at the peak of production in 1805, Jamaica produced over 100,000 tonnes of sugar. Apart from the cultivation of sugar, enslaved Africans in Jamaica also worked as rum distillers, masons, carpenters, blacksmiths and domestic servants. Mulatto and light-skinned slaves were given preferential treatment and tended to work in domestic roles rather than manual labour, often because they were in fact the illegitimate children of their masters. There were numerous slave rebellions over the years in Jamaica, including two maroon wars in which free and runaway slaves revolted against the British colonial forces. One of the protagonists of the first maroon war is Queen Nanny, the leader of a community of runaway slaves called the Windward Maroons. She commanded a settlement called Nanny Town and for years successfully defended the settlement from attacks by British forces. Queen Nanny was an extraordinary military tactician who outsmarted the British army on numerous occasions, despite them being larger in number and with superior weaponry. Over a period of 30 years, Queen Nanny is credited with assisting over a thousand enslaved Africans escape to freedom. In 1740, the British forces conceded defeat and allocated the Windward Maroons 500 acres of land, known today as Moortown, on the condition that they would not assist the escape of any more enslaved Africans. In 1976, the Jamaican government declared Queen Nanny a national hero, and she appears on the Jamaican $5,000 bill. Other well-known slave revolts in Jamaican history include the 1760 Takis War, an island-wide revolt coordinated by West African slave and former king Taki, and the 1831 Baptist War, a massive uprising involving up to 60,000 enslaved Africans, led by the Black Baptist deacon Samuel Sharp. The abolition of slavery in Jamaica came in two stages. British Parliament formally abolished slavery in 1807, though it continued in practice until another bill was passed in 1833. Enslaved Africans became apprentices, though they continued to work for the same masters. Total emancipation came five years later in 1838. However, most former enslaved Africans continued to live in poverty and the colorist social hierarchy in colonial Jamaica continued to oppress those of African descent. One of the most prominent Jamaicans of the 19th century was Marcus Garvey, a political activist and pan-Africanist born in 1887. He founded a black nationalist movement called the Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League, also known as the UNIA. His teaching and activism sought to end European colonial rule across Africa and to unite Africans with the African diaspora. He also advocated black separatism and controversially collaborated with the white supremacist group the Ku Klux Klan over their shared ideal of racial separatism. 
During his lifetime, he was a divisive and controversial figure amongst civil rights activists, though he is considered a national hero in Jamaica and is credited with encouraging the ideals of self-worth, unity and financial autonomy amongst Africans and the African diaspora. Jamaica gained its independence from Britain in 1962 when the Jamaican Independence Act was passed, though it remains part of the British Commonwealth and the British monarch, Queen Elizabeth II, remains the head of state. So now that we've briefly looked at the history of the African diaspora in Jamaica, let's explore in more detail Afro-Jamaican culture. African influences are deeply embedded into Jamaican culture, from food to music to religion. Classic Jamaican dishes such as rice and peas, jerk chicken and kalaloo, as well as the use of ingredients such as yam, aki and plantain, all speak to the West African culinary influences brought to Jamaica by their enslaved African forebearers. African influenced religions in Jamaica include Mayal, Revival and Kumina, which incorporate elements of African spirituality. Perhaps the most famous religion to originate in Jamaica is the Rastafari movement, which developed during the 1930s among impoverished Afro-Jamaican communities. The Afrocentric ideology of Rastafari developed in opposition to the Euro-dominant British colonial culture of the time, in which black Jamaicans were largely oppressed and discriminated against. In 1933, clergyman Leonard Howell began preaching about the significance of Haile Selassie being crowned the emperor of Ethiopia, saying it fulfilled a biblical prophecy and Haile Selassie was the second coming of Christ. The movement grew rapidly as many followers were drawn to Howell's Afrocentric, Afro-positive, anti-establishment teachings which rejected European colonial rule. Followers of the religion, known as Rastas, believe in a central god known as Jah and affirm Jesus Christ as God incarnate. Rastafari regards the African diaspora as being oppressed within Western society, or Babylon. They consider Africa the promised land and refer to it as Zion. Rastafarians promote natural living and the Ital diet, a vegetarian diet which they believe embodies the vitality, energy and life force afforded by food. Food takes on a religious significance for Rastafarians, who believe the Ital diet increases liberty, the Rastafari term for universal energy. Many Rastafarians wear their hair in dreadlocks, in part because it symbolises the Lion of Judah, which is mentioned both in the Torah and the Bible, and which was a title for the Solomonic emperors of Ethiopia. Although many Rastafarians follow a strict Ital diet and avoid alcohol and tobacco, cannabis is considered a sacred herb of significant spiritual value. It's incorporated into religious ceremonies and rituals and, when used in this way, is believed to bring followers closer to God or Jah. The Rastafari movement gained international recognition with the popularity of Rasta-inspired reggae music, of which the most famous proponent was reggae legend and Rastafarian Bob Marley. Although the movement declined somewhat in the 1980s following the deaths of Haile Selassie and Bob Marley, the Rastafari movement remains strong in many countries around the world, from the UK to Japan to South Africa to Peru. Reggae music evolved in the 1960s from an earlier Jamaican musical genre called ska. Reggae music was characterised by politically conscious lyrics which highlighted social issues and injustices. The 1972 Jamaican movie The Harder They Come depicted reggae music as a conduit of musical and political expression for the poor and oppressed in Jamaica and introduced reggae music to a global audience. Through his music, Bob Marley, arguably the most famous reggae singer and one of the highest selling artists of all time, became an international icon, synonymous with the Rastafari movement and with wider Jamaican culture. Such was his social and political gravitas during his lifetime that he headlined the iconic Smile Jamaica concert in 1976, which sought to unite warring political factions in Jamaica. Marley was seen as a uniting force who was able to connect with a divided Jamaican people even when politicians could not and calm the violence. The following year he was diagnosed with cancer and he passed away in 1981 at the age of 36. Although Jamaica has been home to proponents of black nationalism, pan-Africanism and even black supremacy, racism and colorism still exist in Jamaica today. Colorism can be loosely defined as prejudice against individuals of a darker skin amongst people of the same ethnic group. In other words, discrimination by lighter skinned black people towards darker skinned black people. 
Colorism remains a widespread phenomenon in Jamaica, whereby the belief prevails that having a lighter skin tone leads to increased opportunities, including employment and even finding a partner. This has led to a dangerous trend in skin bleaching, where people use bleach products to chemically lighten the complexion of their skin. Over time, this can have toxic and hazardous effects on the health, and is a reflection of how pervasive colorism remains in pockets of Jamaican society. As a result, several dark-skinned Jamaican celebrities have called for a celebration of Afrocentric beauty standards, including the dancehall star Spice with her 2018 song Black Hypocrisy. Other notable black Jamaicans not already mentioned include the activist Claude McKay, musician Peter Tosh, politician and former Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller, and the world record holding Olympic medalist Usain Bolt. That's it from me for this video. Don't forget to like, comment and share and find me on Instagram at Freedom Is Mine Official for daily content on the African diaspora worldwide. Freedom is mine.